Right, right, exactly. Yeah. It's never been that energy <laughs> yeah. when a nigga walk around, man. And that's something I always pride myself on. You know, it's just it's character. You know, we nobody is perfect. We all are flawed. But I always try to uh, present myself in a way that is respectable. You know, I always feel like yeah. if you give niggas respect, a nigga gonna give it back to you. And if they don't, then we got an issue. And then, and I don't yeah. want no issue. So you go ahead with that shit, bro. Definitely. I'll deal with it later. And that's what I tell people, like, because I used to hear all the time, like, you gotta earn respect. But then I'm like, nah. To with me. I give respect at the forefront. Right, like, right. I'm opening the door. I with feel that. like you earn disrespect. That's a fact, y'all. That is like, very true. That's what you earn. That's what you earn. Because I lead with respect. Because right. I expect anybody I encounter to lead with respect. Exactly. Because why? Because why I don't understand. Yeah, like yeah, why would you not? I don't know you from shit. What we got a problem for? Yeah. <laughs> Pull up the potion, break yeah. up a back and re-roll it. I got the wave from the ocean, Whoa. bitch. I was chosen Whoa. to be the shit. You Whoa. see the shit, and I bet yeah. you just noticed that I got the motion. I got the motion. Yeah. You see me moving, right? I got the motion. Right. Whoa. Whoa. Pull up the potion, break yeah. up a back and re-roll it. I got the wave from the ocean, bitch. Right. I was chosen right. to be the shit. You yeah. see the shit, and I bet you bitch noticed that I got the motion. They militant. Yeah. They give you attention when they see you getting it. Bitches yeah. all wanna be friends with some benefits. Yeah. Niggas be watching and plotting to get you hit. Right. With the money, the life, and the whip you in. Right. All for the love of the dividends. They hate to see niggas they win. See but I'll never be a lick. I gotta stay militant. I keep them focused. Never question where I'm going. Always keeping shit in motion. Blunt lit, got me floating. Make a dollar is a notion. Fuck balling, bitch, I'm coaching. Laid back and I'm coasting. Watch the bragging in the boast and catch you slipping in the open. Casket, gotta close it. Baby's mama gotta hold them. Everything a nigga notice. Everything a nigga own it. Welcome shit, but never won it. Life is your biggest opponent. No signs of atonement. Pray I'm right when I'm wrong and hope I make it to the morning. It's that flame from the stove. Shit came up from a full flip. Now I'm trapping in my I own shit. They give you attention when they see you getting it. Bitches all wanna be friends with some benefits. Yeah. Niggas be watching and blotting to get you hit. Want the money, the life, and the whip you in. Y'all know what's up. Y'all know what's up. It's your boy Regular John, man, and I am here with Mr. Town Baby himself. It, man. Norfolk's own. Yes, sir. A made man. Yeah, man. Lil Four Wheel. Man. Big four wheel. Big four wheel. Big four wheel. Big four wheel. Yes, sir. If y'all don't know who the fuck I'm talking about, we got a driver in the motherfucking building. Yeah, appreciate you having me, bro. That was Definitely. a fire introduction right yeah, there. Man. I like that. You know, bro, <laughs> ran through them all, man. <laughs> yeah, man. We finally got to do this. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They don't even know like the preparation that we had to, <laughs> that we had to put into for doing sure. this shit it's and everything. Been, it's right. been uh, a time for sure, but we are here now. Yeah, we here. You know, I appreciate you pulling up, bro. Definitely. And, you know, and you working. With me, you know, yeah, and getting this done because I yeah. said something I wanted to do, so I'm glad we were able to really lock in and get this shit done. Yeah, yeah and sure. it's, it's it's definitely gonna be a good one. It's yeah. definitely gonna be a dope one. So man, the Big Four Wheel Project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. recently dropped. Yeah, that shit hard. Appreciate it, bro. That shit hard. Appreciate and you know, I don't just say shit hard just because I'm yeah. sitting beside a nigga like yeah. that shit. Really, yeah. like I really, I really fuck with that shit, man. So what was the what was the preparation into like when you was Putting that together, man. That that project, the Big Four Wheel project, actually took a little bit longer uh, to put out than most of my projects do. And I think more than anything is because we were all still coming off the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being in the house, I had put out uh, a little EP while the pandemic was going on, first day out. But you know, trying to make music uh, is a little bit harder when you just used to sitting in the crib. You yeah. know what I'm saying so it just took some time, but. Um, I just sat down, I just, just focused over the, like the year and a half, two years that we was on quarantine and just recorded certain songs, did certain things. Like I got a whole lot of records through that time, yeah. you know, that didn't make the project, but those, uh, select records were the ones I was like, nah, these are, these are pretty strong. They all kind of felt yeah. like they fit together well, you know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, let's go with this just to, just to drop something that was more, uh, of just music then catered to like pandemic shit. Cause like yeah, I said, yeah. I did a project during the pandemic, but it was first day out. So it was yeah. COVID themed shit. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. So to do something outside of that, it just was, that was my, that was my goal for real. You know yeah. I mean? Well, you hit the mark. Appreciate it, bro. Cause there's definitely some shit you can ride to. Some shit you can just bump in the crib. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's, and the shit that we came into, Militant, that was like the first joint that, that, that caught me. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? When I, when I played the shit back, like, oh, let me hold on. We're yeah. going to go to the next song, yeah. but let me run this bitch let back. Run a, that back once let me run twice. this back a couple yeah. times real quick. For sure, for sure. 
But yeah, like so, with the like, how did the pandemic affect you, like artistically, since you bought it? You know. So, like I said, you know, it's kind of hard to create, man. Uh, in a sense, you know, when you're trying to make music for the people because you're not around yeah, people. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's one of them things where being in a house kind of changes the subject matter a lot. You know, like I said, the tape that I put out was called First Day Out. So yeah. it was all COVID quarantine rap thing. Yeah. Bars, you know, now to help ease motherfuckers' pain yeah, while they know, going like, through this. I'm in the house like you in the house, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's one of them situations. So it was cool to uh, to do that and just to, to capture that. But outside of that, it was stifling from a creative space because, like I said, yeah. we not outside. It's just one of them things where, you know, most rappers rap about rap about life, the life that they live in, and yeah. everybody's on the same time. We all yeah, see like we're gonna. Where, where can you live in the house? Where can you live in the house? You like, know what I'm saying? You can't you can't you can only talk about the kids and shit so much. Right. Like, so much, can't. so much. The life bars get like, you know what I mean, kind of wa- washed out quick because it's like, damn, bro, and we all live in the same life right now. We yeah. all in the crib. So, I know everybody relate, but damn. Yeah, we all like it's this shit is I'm I'm glad this shit is coming to the end. Yeah. It ain't quite over, but I'm glad it's right, coming to the end. Right, we just gotta right. hope this uh this monkey pox I shit. I was just don't. about to say that, man. You <laughs> we gotta better. hope this shit don't um you turn know, turn up on us, so because I can't, I can't take another goddamn two, three years of just not doing shit. Crib. Yeah, That's I can't fact. do it. I can't do it unless they cutting checks though. If they start cutting them yeah. checks again, they throw the stimmies back my way. Like you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it might be a little different game there. You know, I see, I see people talking about that shit all the time now. Like yo, man, if Monkey Pox bring the, the, the stimmy back, I'm sitting down. I'm taking advantage <laughs> of it. Yeah, I feel you. You got to for sure, for sure. Hey, look, I always tell people, and you ain't got to listen to me, but I always tell people anytime you can take advantage of the government, do it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure, because they definitely gonna do the same thing to you. Any any chance you get to take advantage of the government, just do that shit though. But yeah, man. Um, so like, so what kept you inspired? Like when all this shit was going on, like, just I mean, being creative. You yeah. know, honestly, like I'm just a creative, bro. So yeah. just even when uh, things aren't moving, I'll find something to be creative with around shit not moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's kind of how the first day out project came about. Uh, I did that, and I did another project that was, like, some freestyle short film type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was just the 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 sitting down. It does stifle creativity, like I said, from a space of content because yeah. you can only talk about one specific thing for real. But for me, it was just trying to find different ways to talk about that one thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, so, like, yeah, like, in the, in, the, in the course of the pandemic and all that, the two projects that I did put out, were super catered and themed around that, yeah. but they were both completely different. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, hey, versatility is a lot, man. Yeah, man. And I mean, you you definitely um, like throughout the years showed your versatility a little bit. Appreciate that, so, bro. Appreciate that, man. Like, uh, so when it come to the music, because I know I know it's one other thing you love, and that's performing. Yeah, so, that's like, my shit. So what do you prefer? You prefer performing or you prefer the, the art of recording and putting the music and shit together? So, you, so you know, John, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, bro, because, like, <laughs> see, and you ask, that's a very good question. I'm not sure because, like, all right, the high of performing is something like no other, right? I've been, been on, like, a whole lot of different stages, bro. Yeah. Like, I've been blessed to be able no to No two act. tracks. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, you better rap your song. You better rap your song. Okay? That's what they shout out to the locks, but he, yo, this nigga has definitely been fussing at niggas about doing that shit for years, years, bro, for years, years, bro, because that just shows that you serious about your craft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is it's it's nothing wrong with having ad libs on the record. It's nothing wrong with having a hype man on the record. You know, but being an MC means you gotta move the crowd, bro. You are the one that's moving the crowd. Definitely. At the end of the day, the music is an instrument that you're using to help get your point across, but it's about you. Getting your point across, you know, yeah. and I be feeling like the two track is is you cheating, yeah. you're not even cheating because that shit doing all the work. You ain't even really rapping a song. It's you singing karaoke, but that's neither here nor there. But nah, because like, even karaoke they don't need. It. They just got the words they on got the, the words screen. on the like, screen. Jai ain't even want to go there, bro. They just got the words on the screen. Hey, look, I I I be the bad guy for you. Right, man. I, bet, got you bet, I got you, though. I got you. I got you. But yeah, bro. Okay, so back back to the question. Yeah, yeah, though, yeah. Like, all right, I don't really know because. Uh, they go hand in hand. You can't really have one without the other. Like you gotta have the whole process and magic of making a song, yeah, and recording the song and feeling that energy of feeling like this one of them ones. Yeah, that energy is what leads to 
getting it on stage, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and then being able to per perform it for people, you know. So it's it's they go hand in hand. Uh, I will say that performing does provide a more immediate high than the actual process of creation. You know, yeah. when you create a record, it's like, damn, all right, this shit feel like it might be something. Yeah. But you got to start playing it for people for them to be like, all right, bro, you might have something. This, this shit, all right, I'm feeling this shit too. But if you perform a record in front of people, if you perform it the right way and that record feels the right way, that shit is an immediate oh, yeah. response. Though. One thing one thing I know, crowds don't lie. Yeah, bro. <laughs> right. Crowds don't lie. Crowds don't like, lie. Even if they came to see you specifically, if that shit ain't what it is, they... Hey, whoa, nah, this ain't yeah, it. This ain't it, bro. Yeah, they definitely gonna let you know. Yeah, they gonna definitely, definitely let you know, and that's the thing. Like I tell people all the time. So if it when performing, put a put a lot of energy and effort into performing and making sure that you are giving a good show, no matter yeah. what the platform is, because, like you said, crowds don't lie, energy don't lie. The record might be weak for real, yeah. but if you present it the right way from a performance space, people might just be like, "Yo, this is that shit," and yeah. run with it. So. Cause I've I've definitely uh, had a couple of drinks where I was at a showcase open mic or just niggas performing or whatever, mm -hmm. and like I might have that might have been my first introduction to him. Right. So I'm like, yo, this shit hard. Yeah. I get in the whip and it's like, eh, damn, this was the same song. Yeah, it was. Like, it was hard alive. Like yeah. he should just make a live version of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and that, I said, but yeah, and that's the reality of it though. But then some, you know, some people I guess they make music just to perform. Yeah, yeah. I do have some some music artist friends that are like that. You know, their intent is, I, I'm going to make this song because when I get in the club, I want people to chant this. Yeah. Or when I'm performing, I want them to chant this. So when you listen to it in a different space, like in a yeah. wheel, in a car, it's not going to hit the same way as it would if you were to catch it live. And I understand that, too. You know, but you still don't want the music to be, like, super questionable. Like, I don't get that. Like, yeah. what the fuck going on? But, you know, it's all art. It's subjective. So I guess. Definitely. You know. I know, like, during some creative processes, once you finally complete it and you play that shit back, I know in your mind you like, oh, I'm going to fuck them up with this when I, oh, get, yeah. when I get on stage. Oh, yeah. I'm going to fuck them up with oh, this yeah. shit. So, like, it's crazy, man, because so because of the pandemic, you know, we really I, – I ain't going to say we – I haven't been performing since because I have been able to be on a couple stages, but I've been performing a lot of older content. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with me just putting this tape out, I was really, like, leery. I'm, I have been leery of performing these songs because I feel like the songs are good, the songs are strong. If I perform them, they're going to go over well. Yeah. But I just have not done newer content in so long, you know what I'm saying? So I got records that I'm like, yo, I know when I drop this shit, I'm going to do this like this yeah. and do this like this, and it's going to grab people this way. I'm anxious to see if that is actually the case, you <laughs> know, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, you definitely do get that feeling like, you know, this going to be one of the ones. I got a couple records like, like I feel like militant. I feel like militant when militant is to come on in in an open venue form, and I'm in a crowd of people. That shit gonna ring off like it's supposed to. Yeah. I feel like uh, the song I got motion. I feel like motion is gonna ring off the right way. You know what I'm saying when yeah, I perform that one. Too. Um, I got a couple other records up there too. It's, but it's just it's it's one of them things where I mentally try to visualize how I'm gonna go about it before I get there. So yeah. so I I kind of am ready. But yeah, it's, I got a few that I got in the, in the tuck that I'm like, yeah, once I get to do these live, it's going up. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you think on it though, cause you gonna you gonna have an answer by the end. You gonna be like, you know what? Yeah. I still yeah. I'm gonna be like, it's hard, man, cause like I said, you can't have one without the other. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, the only difference with performing is just that immediate high. Yeah. It's that like this is instant gratification. These people, if you really fuck that shit up. People is gonna be like, bro, you killed that shit. As soon as you get off stage, no matter where you at, no matter what platform stage you on, whatever. Once you get down to the people, if you really put your work in, they're gonna be acknowledging that shit. That's one of the things that you can't get yeah. from a record. You know what I'm saying? You gonna have to wait for that shit to cycle through. You know what I mean? Make its rounds and then to come back. But with that performance shit, you put in work, you are gonna get your love back immediately. Yeah, and I mean that's the truth though, cause like. You you thirsty as a bitch. You just got off the stage. You trying to get to the bar real quick. And Facts, bro. And niggas like half nah, the bro, crowd want to adapt bro, you and tell you, yo, bro, you can't this, yo, that motherfucker. What can I get that? Hey, keep doing your thing, son. You know what I'm saying? All that, whatever the like, case. Bro, may I be. ain't leaving. Let me just go get right, some to drink right, real quick. Right. I'll be right back. Look, like, come come holler at me nah, in two they, minutes. Uh uh, they gotta tell you right yeah. now because that's the high that you gave them. <laughs> so while that high is still present, I gotta oh, yeah. give you this energy back. So that's you know. And you know you got the one nigga that he ain't letting this go. No 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 no. I gotta talk to you. He right here in the ear. He he not letting the dap go. He gonna keep talking to you until yeah. you've been there before <laughs> you didn't experience it <laughs> nigga, he gonna keep talking to you the whole time but yeah so um what 
what was the process like of finding your sound? Like, w- w- like when did you know, like, yo, you know what? This is me. Mm-hmm. This is me. This is what I'm doing. Even with the versatility, like, you still know what your sound is. Yeah. You know your lane. Like, uh, what was that? Like, when did you figure that out? I'm going to say honest. So, uh, so from a music space, I kind of always had an idea of what what music fit me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just based upon the artist that I liked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would always try to mimic somewhat, somewhat mimic certain sounds and things of that nature because I felt like a lot of the artists that I liked kind of were like a reflection of me a little bit, if yeah. that makes sense. Like, I could see no, absolutely. bits and pieces of shit that I would do with them. So I was like, all right, this is cool. Did I feel like they do? Let me try to do the same thing. But I say from 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 a individual space, it all came together, bro. Probably like at, I got a project called Over Everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was just one of the moments where I was like, yo, this shit just, all right, I know I can rap in this pocket. I know I can rap in this lane. You know, I know I'm not a sing-songy nigga, so let's not try to do no sing-songy shit. Yeah. We're going to do some rap shit. You know what I mean? All right, we're going to do it like this. Let's let's keep the same feel of ess- the essence that rap is, but let's still make this shit modern yeah. and do, like, up-tempo shit because you can rap a little bit faster. So, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? And and that was one of them projects where I was like, you know what? All right, this the lane. It. This is it. We're going to do some some records that feel nostalgic of me from high, like some high school shit, like the songs that I liked in high school or the sound that I like. I know like, all right, I like this artist and how this, these song, sounds make me feel. So I'm gonna try to yeah. capture sounds that feel like this and go about it in the way that I would. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say over everything. And that was maybe like, maybe, maybe like six, seven years ago. Yeah. Like six, seven years ago, I really settled into my pocket. You know what I'm saying? And that, and I think it just came with age. You know what I'm saying? I tell a lot of the young homies that I'd be like, I know y'all niggas be like, you don't fuck with the old niggas since that and the third, but them the niggas you need to listen to because they are so comfortable. Yeah. in their pocket it's like it's, they should not be enforced and that's kind of where you want to get with, with the music that you're doing or whatever you're doing you want to be so seasoned in it that it's just second nature to you like this shit is comfortable this is where i'm at i'm absolutely i know this is what it is so you know that that's really what it was for me just taking time yeah man that's no nah, that's that's dope though because a lot of people i mean like i i hear people now and I, this ain't bashing because sometimes you just don't know like some niggas i just they still are searching for what their sound is. Yeah, like, yeah. When the sounds change, they change. They change too. with it. So it's, yeah, it's one, it's, of the, it's one of them things where I feel like you just gotta grow. Yeah. You know, it's just a much. It's it's kind of like a maturity thing. You have to. Music, man, is so reflective of the person, right? Yeah, absolutely. You just have to get to a place of being super comfortable with who you are. Like, this is me, bro. This is what I'm doing. This is what it is. And yeah. then it'll reflect in the music and in the artistry. You know, a lot of, like you like you were saying, the niggas will be changing with the sound because they still trying to figure themselves out Yeah, in a sense. Like, damn, but bro. They gonna, you do that, you're going to keep doing that. You're going like, to keep you, doing you, that, right? You ain't going to have no option but to keep doing it because but once, yeah. you, once you stamp your sound, you can weave in and out of the new shit mm-hmm. and... Come like, back to what you do, you know what it. I mean? And that actually kind of, kind of adds value to what you provide because yeah. it's like, damn, I know this nigga do this, but damn, you can come and do this shit yeah. too and smoke this shit and then come and just jump right back to what you do like it's yeah. nothing. Damn, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, Yeah. Nah, that's that's definitely the truth. So um, what does MADE mean to you? Hmm. You know, the, ac- the acronym is Make a Dollar Every Day. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But... Uh, to be made, man, it's it's more than just that, you know. Uh, it's it's to be solidified, cemented, you know what I mean. To be made, it means that that you took the initiative for whatever it is that you were doing in life and said, "This is what it is." You know, yeah. what I mean, I'm stamping this shit. This is what it is, right? I'm gonna be recognized and acknowledged for this, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? You made your way, you know. So. That's that's what it means to me. You making your way, you finding your way, and solidifying yourself in whatever that is that you're doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You made, you made it, you made yourself this. You know what I mean? So, that's 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 what it means to me. You know? Absolutely. And if you make a dollar every day, you up. You hey, listen. If you if you spend ninety nine and make a hundred, you got the ninety nine back. You made a dollar, you, you up. You made a dollar, you up. And even. And not even in the, in the literal sense of money, you know, yeah. the, the whole concept of just making some type of progress every day. You know what I mean? Some type of daily progression. Well, that, yeah. That's just the whole the whole motto and, and, and really, really uh, science behind it. You know, it's make a dollar every day because, you know, the monetary is something that we all kind of gauge and measure 
things yeah. or life off of. You know, the more financial, financially stable you are, the more people. Absolutely. Are, absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. You know, people, people, people pay pay more attention. So of course we're gonna push to get the dollar shit. But yeah, just progress every day, some form of progression yeah. every day. That's yeah. the goal. So y'all hear that? He trying to tell y'all that. You know what I'm saying. Currency ain't the only form of money. Yeah, nah, not at all. So, not at all. Build a relationship today. You might not have known somebody yesterday, and the person you met today could help you get closer to the dollar you're trying to get. Yeah. You know, and people. I tell people all the time. People network is way more valuable than the dollar. You know, and yeah. and your relationship with people is is something that you always want to keep intact because you can be fucked up. I didn't been fucked up even in this space. I didn't been fucked up and had to call niggas and be like, Yo, bro, look, I need X, Y, Z. I'm going to get you back right when I can get my shit together. All right, cool, yeah. bro, I got you. You know what I mean? Network, yeah, people network, and just, just how you move and carry yourself is always one of the most important things. So make yeah. a dollar every day in the sense of progress every day, not just make a monetary dollar. Yeah, no, nah, character is definitely everything. For sure. And, you know, this shit been around since, we probably been saying this since like 08, 09, but your network is your net worth. That's a fact, though. Yeah, your network is your net worth because you never know, like, who want to help you just because they see you doing something. Right. Right. Like, it might not even be a person that you ever was going to reach out to for help. Right. Somebody might be like, yo, I see this nigga grinding. You know what? I'm about to take him under my wing. Right. or I'm about to, I know right. somebody that. I know somebody that can connect a dot and, or build a bridge and whatever the case may be. And yeah. that's just one of them things, though. Character and network is always important. Yeah, because there's some people that, like, they might not even hit you and tell you they sent somebody your way. Right. They might be like, yo, I know this. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Here he go. Don't take no credit for it. Right. Nothing. You just think a blessing came out of nowhere. Right. It was just somebody watching. It was just like, yo, yo. Exactly. Like, yo, this dude right here doing this thing. Go ahead. Go check that out. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is. Yeah. That's how it go, bro. Like, yo, I, it's nothing I can do with him, but right. I know you've been looking for this. Yo, boom. Right. Send him. Send him. I'm going to send, send you his way, and then y'all make, make magic. Yeah. So, I mean, so, yeah, you definitely, like, character takes you everywhere. So most people ain't really gonna want to network you with you if your character ain't not at right, all. Though, that's so. gonna that's gonna be a downfall more than anything. You know what I'm saying? If people look at you and feel like your character is off, yeah, you know it's like I don't know about this nigga. You know that that limits your opportunity yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad I never been to oh, hear this nigga come. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad man. I never been one of them. Yeah, y'all, that shit is real. <laughs> that shit is real. At least not that I know of. Yeah, you know, yeah that's like, true. That's true. That's true. We got to say that, too. Because a nigga might look at you and feel, oh, hey, this nigga come again, and we not know that you pull up, and they, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah, whole time. So at least not that I know yeah, of. Yeah, right, I, right, I right, there, right, so. right. <laughs> but yeah, man. Four wheel. Mm -hmm. Where'd that come from? Uh, So that's funny, man. So the four wheel came uh, at a time slightly after over everything, right? I had found mm -hmm. my lane, found my pocket and shit, but... My uh, partner, Carnell, was like, yo, bro, you know, music getting younger. And it was, you know, everybody was Lil Somebody. You know, yeah. this was like niggas was. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say the four big four. Look, I mean, I'm going to say over everything was probably like 2016 or so, something yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? So around that time, it was a lot of Lil Uzis, Lil Yachty's, Lil everybody. Er, right? Lil Pun. It, just, Lil Pun. it, it was a lot of Lil's. you came like, out, you was Lil. Yeah, it was a lot of Lil's. Heavy on the Lil's. So we sitting, bro, in a Jeep. And, like, not even on some, not for nothing, me and my nigga gang was just smoking, bro. We was smoking, being stupid like we do. We laugh yeah. and joke all day. That's my my right-hand man. That's the owner, Certified Chicken Chaser. So we laughing and joking like we do, you know. And bro hit me with the, you little four-wheel. <laughs> just out of nowhere. Yeah, nigga. bro. He just, you little four-wheel. I said, what the hell is you talking about? He was like, I'm telling you, man, you got to be little somebody. Like, y'all, we having a conversation, and in the midst of the yeah. conversation, we stop talking. It gets silent, right? <laughs> and he come back, you little forward. And I'm like, all right, bet. So he, when he explained, you in the truck, you always in the truck, bro. We always in the Jeep. We be riding around and shit. You be wild, and niggas don't know you. You be cool all the time, but we behind the doors off. You behind niggas scared and shit. You be doing wild shit. <laughs> I was like, yeah. On some, on some Wayne Brady, minus the corny part. On some Wayne Brady, Dave Chappelle shit. Mm -hmm. Bro, I be wildin' with them you niggas. Just... <laughs> niggas would never know, bro. Niggas would never know. My niggas would tell you, they be like, yo, don't let him drink, man. He just keep driving cool. But you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I take the doors off of them niggas. Them niggas would be terrified. I'm doing a hundred on the interstate. <laughs> no, you on a roller coaster there ain't nothing on this bitch. <laughs> you about to flip that shit like the, like the Flintstones whip. Nah, nah, we good. You know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> Fact. So he was like, bro, you little four wheel, man. So, you know, jokingly, 
it, it was some inside shit between me and bro. So, cause cause while he was saying this, I'm I'm listening to him. I'm paying him mind, but I'm not paying him mind. Yeah, yeah. In the same token, though, you know what I'm saying. But from a creative space, I'm trying to figure out what's next. So, uh, I take a picture, bro, one night on the ocean front, sitting on the jeep and shit, and I post it on Instagram with the hashtag Little Four Wheel. Joking, I tag him. We laugh in the comments and shit. It is what it is. I dismiss it. Two, three days later, I'm in the mall and I'm walking through the mall and on word to my kids, bro, a nigga stopped me and was like, What's up, Four Wheel? <laughs> I was like, All right. <laughs> Little Four Wheel project on the way. <laughs> Little Four Wheel project on the way. So just, you know, from that, from just that randomness of our conversation, us joking, me making the post and yeah. and do uh me seeing Buddy in the mall and homie identifying with it and shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't even no dude. I ain't even no homie like that. Not even trying to be funny. I appciate you, bro. Yeah. Cause you like help solidify the moniker for me. But yeah, like, what's up, for Will? When the next project dropping? And like Ja had like a dumb moment, bro. Like the, everything got slow. Like now I'm like, laughing because I'm playing it in my head, and I just knowing you, I'm trying to like your, your facial expression. I was just like, bro. <laughs> I'm like, all right, word. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ain't shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, this shit coming. Like, like, yeah. Because the, the last thing on your mind is Instagram. The yeah, last bro, thing you Instagram, thinking about bro. is a nigga saying like seeing the Instagram and coming up with that. You like, how the fuck this nigga know, bro? Listen, I'm telling you, and it was just the only thing on the post. It was hashtag Lil' Four Wheel. Yeah. At whatever my nigga Carnell at name was at the time, yeah. laughing emoji and shit. That was it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but he seen it and just, I guess he was, he, I did, oh, okay, I get it. That's what you're going as now. So, him seeing it identified and running with it gave me more confidence to run with it. So, once I did it, and it was crazy, like, just how shit be working, man. So, I go to my mother's crib, and she got pictures out, and it's a picture of me as a kid sitting in, like, a Jeep. Yeah, and I seen that, that I was gonna get that. So I'm glad you let me segue into that because yeah, I was bro. gonna say, is that like little four wheeler? That what made you take that and use it as the album that's cover? Because that was use, definitely one that I was coming that way with. That's it. what made me yeah. use it as the album cover, bro. No bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shit, just this it, shit. It just went together. You know, I didn't have any kids at that moment or none of that shit. My son wasn't here. My my oldest yeah. son wasn't here yet or none of that. So. I was just, you know, it the, the the dots were just connecting, and it was like sometimes things become so divine, you just gotta run with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. I just turned into little four wheel in a matter of like three weeks. Yeah. And I was like, all right, this what we doing, you know? And like I said, just by me continuing to run with it and just having the homies and everybody else call me four wheel, it's it has stuck. Yeah. You know, I'm big four wheel now because I got kids and shit. <laughs> so I was definitely gonna ask when little four wheel turned into big four wheel. Yeah, man. So. Yeah. So now, little man, that's little four wheel now. Yeah, you gotta, little, you gotta I, get him the little jeep. So I got, I got little four wheel. That's my oldest son. My son Brent is five. And my son uh, Cody is ten months old. He baby four wheel. Yeah. You know. So, yes. Uh, it's I gotta get the four wheels together. Gotta get my four <laughs> wheels together, man. Nah, definitely. How is fatherhood, man? I love fatherhood, bro. It's it's so grounding. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. You no, know. It, 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 it's definitely a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, bro. Like, when I leave here, I'm going home, and I am going to lay in the bed because my son still don't sleep through the night yet, so I'm going to lay in the bed. Yeah. My wife probably going to go to sleep. Me and him going to watch whatever <laughs> until about 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm going to try to tire bro out, but it just don't be happening. Now. I don't yeah. know what he got going on, so... It's the swaddle, man. man. You gotta throw him in the swaddle, bro. You might be on to something, John. You gotta. I, I'm gonna send you the link to the one I use, man. Please you do. gotta throw him in the swaddle. Please I got bro. this shit with the zipper, like when I tell you, bro. My man ain't made it through the night yet. I'm like, oh Yo, yeah, G. dog. This swaddle about to change your life. You can't use the blanket though. You can't use the blanket swaddle no more. They gonna bust out of that yeah, shit. Yeah, bro. My that's, son's strong as a bitch. Bro, that's the issue. Yeah. That's the issue. My wife be trying to swaddle him and put him in like his crib, but. But he rolled once or twice, and he out. He out there, shit. yeah. Like, like, my son, he just, he just. Yeah, man. Like, everything, but his arms be in that bitch. And I'm like, Facts. bro, how the fuck? Ain't even no holes in this shit. Facts. How did so, you get out of this? Yeah, so. How did this happen, Cole? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, dog. Swaddle and rice. Throw the rice mm -hmm. in his bottle. Yeah, we heavy, we heavy on the rice. <laughs> we heavy on the rice. Yeah. Throw the rice in his bottle. But that shit. That shit don't knock him out though. It just calm him down. That's it. Now you he just want to play. Yeah, you a real dad. You yeah. understand the situation <laughs> that got going on here. <laughs> 
Rice my man out. I be thinking he going to sleep. He just get calm on me. Yeah. Like, the worst shit in the world is when you dead tired and you look at your kid and he smile at you. Because you, know, you know this nigga's up for at least another hour. Facts, man. Facts like, damn, boy, you still moving. Why are you smiling? You too happy. It's 1.30. What are you smiling for? Yeah, like, you you dead tired. I, you nodding. But you can't just leave this little nah, man up by himself. So it's just like, yo, come on. You cannot. So, yeah, no, nah, I got you. Though. I'm going to send you that. I'm going to send you that. Please, in real so. life, send me that outside of the podcast in real yeah, life. Nah, I'm going to send you that for sure. That shit, bro. that shit works wonders, man. That shit yeah. definitely works wonders. So, I'm going um, to pause it real quick. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. why is Brandon so important to you? Um, Because it's like your name, you know, and my name is my name. No, I'm just having uh <laughs> Like Pepsi. Yeah, facts though. <laughs> you guarantee it. Yeah. You know, I guarantee it. And that's the thing, man. Branding makes you omnipresent. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the biggest things for me. I uh just paying attention to like a lot of my favorite artists and a lot of the, the artists that I consider to be great. That was one of the things that really separated them mm-hmm. from a lot of the other artists. You know, they were able to brand themselves so in a way that was so strong that you could associate certain things to them without them even being there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody pulled up with gin and juice, you're going to be like, oh, who you think you Snoop Dogg? <laughs> yeah, that's you the, yeah. I mean? that's the yeah. first. Nah, that's awesome, real. Awesome joking shit. The nigga like, what you drinking, gin and juice? Oh, you, what you Snoop, nigga? Like, oh, you, you got some weed? Oh, what you whiz? Or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like, branding and attaching yourself to product, especially when it's your own, is just uh, always a really great way to keep things going for you and keep keep streams of income moving. You know what I'm saying? So... That's why it's always been so big for me because I, I once I realized that my brand was just as strong and important as the music and whatever else I was doing, it was like, yeah. all right, okay, we got to make sure that this is as clean and, and professional as we can make it because you selling that product at the end yeah. of the day. You know what I mean? I want everybody to feel like it's something they want to be attached to. And we're selling it, your name behind it too. So name behind yeah. it, right, you know. So like this is you. Yeah. Like they know if good or bad. And if this it's bad, you. they gonna let you know it's bad. But good or bad, like this is you, right? So, yeah, because a lot of people don't. I don't think they really understand what branding is. Nah, no, 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 no. You see, a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My nah, fault, yeah, you bro. good. You good. I was about to say a lot, but a lot of that comes just from understanding, you know, the concept of business and I say consistency because a lot of branding come branding a product comes from consistency. You got You have to consistently. Uh, be promoting, advertising, marketing, whatever words you want to use, said product to people, uh, and be confident in that and and sure of it yourself because that's how you make other people feel the same way about it, you know. And a lot of people get tired of doing that shit. You know, I make a commercial every day on my phone. A lot of niggas be like, bro, how you do that shit? How you talking to the phone every day? Because like, I want you to come shop every day, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I have to cement this to you so you know that this is really what this is. You yeah. know, it's a brand. This is really what I'm looking for. And you mm-hmm. really got to put it in their head, though. If they mm-hmm. see this every day, and they might have never thought about it before, but at some point they're going to be like, man, fuck that shit. Let me go in here and see, what, go in here and see what's going just, on. Just to, just, even if I don't even, I'm going to just go see what the fuck it is. Right. And then once they're in here, you already know. Like, it's... Know what I'm saying, yep. That's the easy part. That's once the they, easy once they, part. once they step in the door, it's just that's the easy part. That's the easy. Once I get you here, I got you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, but that's the thing. Like branding yourself, like, is like, like you said, it's that shit takes patience. It, it takes consistency. It does. You know what I'm saying, like, and and it takes a lot of disappointment. And you got to be able to maneuver through disappointment mm-hmm. for that shit to work. Like you can't. Nah, this shit ain't working. Let me find something else. Facts. You something gotta, else can be plan B, but that shit, you can't just switch plan A to another plan, plan A. A. You got to yeah. take the lows with the highs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes the lows come more than the highs. But, you know, if you stay in it and stay diligent and consistent to it, them highs will be high. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, oh, man, I didn't, I've gotten so high. Let's not see another low. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My high is so high now that my low ain't even a low. And that's what you want to kind of get to. You yeah. know what I mean? The point of pushing and promoting something so much that your your falls don't even look like falls to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know you trip. They don't even Nothing. know you stumble. You know what I mean? They like, oh, this nigga just break dancing real. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I ain't know this nigga did that. Yeah, too. I ain't know that nigga did that. Damn, you do that too. <laughs> nigga break dancing. What do he don't do? But yeah, like, you know, consistency. So what what keeps you consistent? Consistently persistent. 
I love this shit, bro. Yeah. I, I, that's it. I can't even explain it no further than that. And what makes me so aware of that is that I did this shit for so many years. I did everything for so many years. And even now, I do a lot of stuff for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are a lot of things that I do or and have, and have done and ain't see no monetary benefit or no other benefit from just yeah. I love doing this shit, bro. The only benefit I got from it from it is that my heart felt felt fulfilled. Yeah. For from whatever the act was. I didn't went and done a show someplace. I had to drive four hours, six hours. It cost me money to get there. The niggas was supposed to pay me, they ain't pay me. I'ma still rap, bro. Damn, for real, bro. You single from Yeah, bro. I still perform, bro. I yeah. came out here, bro. I'm here now, bro. Fuck it, bro. I love this shit. <laughs> I ain't doing this shit for you. Like, yeah, don't call me no more. Yeah, don't no, right. Don't call me no more, bro. <laughs> like, don't call me no more. But I'm about to get off though. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. y'all niggas invited me out. You said you was gonna pay me, you didn't, whatever. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, man, just the genuine love of it, man. I love to be I love I'm a creative person, so I love the the, the concept of creation. I love creating. Yeah. I love uh having a thought and then uh, fixating on that thought to the point that it comes to fruition yeah. and then seeing it manifest and turn into a whole massive whatever. Like, even with this, you know what I'm saying? This Made in Norfolk shit was not thought of to this extent. Like, when I started, you know what I mean? I always, I ain't gonna say always, once I started doing it and seeing it start to progress and grow through my friends, I was like, I'm yeah. gonna get a store one day. But mind you, this is 10 years ago, so... Damn, damn, you, driver, can I do my job? Nigga, oh, you bad. took my one fault. of my, my questions fault. away, my man. Fault. I'm gonna stop Can talking I, so much. I'm gonna stop talking so much. Go ahead. Oh. Media trained ass nigga, my fault, man. man. My fault, bro. I'm <laughs> talking too much. It's my fault, man. This old media trained. Now nah, I'm just fucking with my you, bro. Fault, man. I just wanted to throw that in there. Cause nah, that was really a question though. So we can get into it. And I'm gonna let you just finish. Yeah, I'm gonna bet, let you bet, keep bet. going. I was gonna say what made you open the made an office store. So I mean, like, go ahead and uh, continue. So that one, that wasn't even what made me open the store. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The thought of the store came maybe. Eight years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I said, once I really started to see uh, how Nip was moving. Yeah. Once I started to see that. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace to, to Nip. You know what I mean? Once I started to see how real that shit was. Yeah. You know, like, damn, this is really attainable. Like, all right, this is a nigga from the hood out his hood. And rap and do what I do. And I'm familiar with Buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even though I wasn't a big fan of I, I wasn't as deep deeply invested musically i ain't gonna say i want a big fan because i felt like nip could rap i just didn't know to yeah, yeah, know yeah, yeah, it you yeah, know yeah. what i mean but once i really tapped in i was like oh i get it and it just made perfect sense like once that shit became a real thing like damn okay you know jay-z is like jay-z he way out there but this nigga you doing some you, shit that I can touch. Like, yeah, you touchable, bro. Niggas you, have been in rooms with Nip. Like, you know, that, you know, that was nobody. Right, bro. And I'm looking at it like, yo, you doing some shit that I can do. You know, and from there, I just kind of got fixated on the thought of having a storefront. So I'm going to say maybe like 2000, because the store opened 2019. Mm -hmm. So maybe like 2017, 2000, between 2016 and 2018, it really got real for me because I started. Uh, really pushing the branding a lot more. You know, uh, me and my partner, Carnell, my partner, Carnell, was really out helping me, like, get this shit out. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it was, the Made in Norfolk shit is something I came up with, but well, you can't really achieve nothing by yourself. So, like, I was like, this my dog. I need some help, bro. Help yeah. me get this shit to the people. Because I can only go here and make a delivery. I can't go over here and do a drop-off. I can't do yeah. this. I can't do that. So, bro, you know, just been in the mud with a nigga from the jump with this shit. So, we started running it, and, and it got to a space where it was like, um, damn, I lost. I didn't lost train of thought. Fuck it, my father. I lost where I was nah, in nah, the you, question. You good? You good? Bro, what was I? What was I talking about? You I'm was sorry. talking about how you, 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 you and your man, you started the store. Oh yeah. You needed help distrib di yeah. with distribution. Needed help with distribution. Now I'm saying you found a plug. You needed yeah. help with distribution. Facts. You needed a distro Facts. to move, need, move your product I, through the yes, city. I needed somebody to help me with distribution. Bro <laughs> yeah. started helping with distro, and you know, just from there, I was working retail. You know, and I was yeah. like, yo, man, if I'm gonna keep doing this shit, you know, it's picking up. People are. Demanding the product more while I'm at my fucking job. I'm working at DCLR. Niggas like, bro, what have made an awful shit at? I'm like, yo, I gotta, this, this, this can't be, yeah. you know, nah, this is, I gotta go. So, uh, I was, during the time of me pushing the brand and the shit, bro, I was on a tour while I was working for DTLR. Shout out to my man, Real Carter. I was on uh, the Real Carter Culture Tour with Real. Yeah. And I had a show with them in, at SOBs in New York on January 31st, two. 2018, no, nah, 17, right? Mm -hmm. I uh, 
jump ship, leave the store, DTLR and shit, go catch a flight, run to New York, get back to DTLR that I wasn't supposed to leave. They let a nigga go, boom. I'm like, all right, I got to figure something out. I, I started pushing the clothes real heavy that summer and shit, but then, then I got a call to get a job. I started working at Jimmy Jazz. And while I was working at Jimmy Jazz in Military Circle, my man Big Steve came in the store one day and was like, driver, what you, what's next, brother? Like, what do you see for yourself? What do you want to do next? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, Steve, you know, I've been doing the music thing for a long time, but I really have started focusing on branding the clothing with myself and everything that I'm doing. I feel yeah. like if I get a store, bro, this shit is going to go. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel like it'll go because people come in here and they ask me about clothing and, and just everything, you know? So I think that'll work. He was like, bro, you know, the best rent pricing for commercial space is right here in Military Circle because around that time, 2019, 18, 19, shit was slow. This pre-pandemic, yeah. you know what I'm saying? This space and over here, all this shit had been vacant for years. A lot of shit was shutting down. Yeah, a lot like, of shit was closing. It was bad. It was I mean, bad. You right, bro. It's getting worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, developers coming in and shit. Yeah, but, but that, that ain't a bad thing, though. Yeah, We're yeah. not going to look at it like a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just meant as far as getting worse with trying to rent oh, trying, like this, yeah, this yeah, space yeah, right yeah, here. Trying, I not, yeah. Facts, facts, Yeah, because ho hopefully if they doing some right shit, they bring them in and... Yeah, we're going to make it look like it's supposed to when yeah. they get back over here, but... Absolutely. But, um... Yeah, nah, it was bad. Like you said, it was bad. You know, it was a situation where things were closed and it wasn't a lot of opportunity for, for commercial space to be rented out. And Steve was like, yo, you know, this space has space so bro i was uh i ain't had no car at this time and some more shit i was walking my mom lives in poplar hall still i grew up in poplar hall so yeah i was walking to my mom duke's crib bro. i'm walking to the crib and in the, in the in the process of me walking i see the space for at least in this window right here i worry and no bullshit he says this shit steve steve makes me aware of this shit on like a wednesday you know what i'm saying I uh, see the storefront. I'm like, all right, word. I call him up. I'm like, yo, I seen the space, man. Just walking to the crib that I fuck with. He was like, all right, we'll go check it out tomorrow. Next day is like Thursday and shit. While I'm, because he was about to open a furniture store. This is before he opened his furniture store in the mall. Shout out to Trophies. Yeah, shout out to Trophies. That's my big brother, man. Steve is a legend to me and a lot of other people. That's yeah. really the dog, man. That's like, he's really a, a ill dog, man. Uh, but um, I'm walking the Trophies, and in the midst of me walking the Trophies, I bump into. The leasing manager at the time, you know what I'm saying? And she's talking to my man, Stefan. He's uh, Stefan, the artist who's got the art gallery in the mall. Mm -hmm. She was talking to Scandalous because Scan was in the mall for some reason. I'm not sure why Scan was in the mall, but she it's was talking. Scandalous. Yeah, he was just in the <laughs> mall, bro. He was floating, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, she was talking to Scan. I can't. I don't know where I go and don't see that nigga. He, bro, yeah. just randomly. He'll pop up and be like, what's up, bro? What the hell you doing? What the fuck is you doing in Wyoming, my nigga? Yeah, like, <laughs> chilling. You know what I mean? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. But yeah, he just popped up, you know what I mean? And uh, they, were, they were having a conversation, and when I walked up, you know, I just go to acknowledge and greet the homies, show the homies love, and they were like overly, I ain't going to say overly, bro, because everything is divine, but it was just, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was cool how it was, though, because they was really showing the nigga love. They was like, telling, like, do you know who this is? So to the lady, he was like, nah, this the guy right here, da 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 da, -da. he just done the third. Tell, tell, him who, tell her who you are, bro. Tell her what you do. I was like, my name is Amir. I own Made in Norfolk, and I'm a rapper. She was like, Made in Norfolk? Like, the clothes? I was like, yeah. She said, my kids got that stuff in, they, in, the, in my house. My, my, my son has a hat. My daughter has a sweatshirt. I'm familiar. I was like, oh, I word. Who are you? She was like, my name is Anita. I uh, do the leasing here. I help with marketing and leasing here at Military oh, Circle. Oh, man, that shit was... I was telling me for you. You were supposed to be in that space at that time. Right, and then I was I like... I don't believe in mistakes. Nah, not at all. Yeah. Like I said, the shit was divine. Yeah. I was like, wow. You know, I said, yo, that's so ironic. I was walking over here to talk to my man, Big Steve, uh, because I was telling him I was interested in some spaces out here, and I saw a space that I was interested in. She said, where? I said, outside the old GameStop, you know, on, on the shops. She said, in the shops? I said, yeah. I said, you know, being in the mall is cool, but it's something about being outside that brick and mortar field just feels like... It feels perfect for me, you know, and I just was so focused and fixated on the marathon store. I was like, I got to be, excuse me, I was like, I got to be in a brick and mortar. I got to be outside. I ain't trying to be yeah. in no mall. I need that walk up to the door feel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was so stuck Turn on my shit open. Yeah, like, bro. yeah, I was so stuck on that. You know what I'm saying? So this was just what I saw. And she was like, all right, let's go over there and check it out. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm on my lunch break. I don't have time. I can't go over there right now. She was like, all right, cool. Friday. Big Steve come walking in the store and Jimmy Jazz with Miss Anita. They said, yo, take your break. <laughs> I said, all right, cool. I'm the assistant manager at the time. I'm in training. I tell the other manager, I'm like, hey, yo, bro, can you hold me down? Like the other assistant manager. He was like, yeah, I got you. Cool. Go ahead, do your thing. 
So I leave, we go over here, show me the space. She was like, what you think? I said, if when you, I said, when can we go? She was like, uh, when you ready? I'm like, shit, uh, you tell me. Like, y'all got damn. me on break. Like, yeah. y'all made me take a break. They expected me to bounce anyway. Right, you know? you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you let me know. She was like, all right. She said, we can, we, I can get you to lease some paperwork and we can go from there. You know, I had some bread and shit saved up just, just in case something happened. You know, a nigga went for broke, but yeah. I was like, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, the car I had, I, I ain't going to say I didn't have a car. I had a car, but my Jeep won't move in. You know what yeah. I mean? My shit was fucked up for real. So that's why I was footing into my mom's crib. My pops is a makeshift mechanic. You know what I'm saying? So he was yeah. trying to get me right. That shit ain't work. I was like, you know what, man? I'm going to just off this shit. And just be like, fuck it, and not worry about nothing for right now. So the little bit of bread I had, dumped it all in the store. The Jeep, I just off the Jeep, you know what I'm saying? I took it back to the, to the Jeep dealership and was like, whatever y'all give me is what it, what it, is, it is, what it is, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? This shit don't work, my nigga. Like, anything better than nothing. Anything better like, than nothing. Give me 200, I'll take it. Bro, that shit had an electrical problem and some old shit. Like, it went and go over like 30. You know what I'm saying? I don't oh, know. Yeah. That shit, we was fucked up in the game. So I was like, yeah, nah. So... They they cashed me out on a little check, you know what I mean? Because the body was still intact and shit. From there, I was like, we all in. I worked at Jimmy Jazz for like another 30 days. And I started setting my departure plan up. Like, Shag Fest was coming up. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try to open a store the same weekend as Shag Fest so I can get all of that promo running in because I knew uh, Shaggy was going to allow us to go to the radio station and plug what we yeah. had going on. So I was like, yo, you know, if I can go to Z104... The day before I open a store, open a store, and then do Shag Fest the following day. That's a good week. So I was like, yeah. all right, we're going to set all that up. So, you know, I was in go mode, super, super, super heavy. Me and, uh, me and gang, I had my man gang in here uh, every so often helping out and shit because he was still working a job. Mm -hmm. Bro was still working a lot too. So I was working. I was coming in here sleeping, you know what I mean, doing what I had to do to get this motherfucker together. You know what I mean? We put this shit together and got open September 22nd, 2019. You know what I mean? And been rolling. Yeah. So it was it was a quick process because I I signed a lease in July, you know, and from there it was just it seemed like overnight we were opening. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was quick and, and it was dope. It was it was definitely something that I will always remember and cherish, you know what I'm saying, with all this shit about to be what it's about to be. But for sure, that's how we got here. You know, it was a divine happening. And now we really here, like Yeah. I like how crazy is it? Like, do you still? Is it every day? Are you are you are you used to it yet? Mm -mm. Like when you walk in here, do it feel like you own this shit? I mean, I, I mean, let me let me rephrase that question because of course you know, do it feel like it's yours? Nah, it's. I know it's, to some people that he like he just asked this nigga the same question twice, but yeah, I no, think no, you no, know no, the no. difference get, yeah, of what yeah. I just what nah, I was for saying. Sure, for sure, for sure, yeah. I definitely get what you do, get what you saying, bro. Like, cause I definitely when I walk in, I feel like I own it for sure. I'm responsible for all this shit. Yeah. But do I, I'm like, I'm walking in, I just be like, damn, bro, I'm really walking in my shit. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? There are days that even me and Carnell talk about that shit. Me and Game being here like, yo, bro, you remember just two and a half, three years ago, bro, we were clocking in. We clock in every day, but we yeah. were clocking in for somebody else. And it was a, there are days that like, I, I wake up, I get my kids together, I take them to school, do what they got to do. You know what I mean? And I open this door and I walk in and it's just like, damn, bro, like, it's it, it's still surreal. You know what I mean? It yeah. is still very surreal. And and I really do believe that that's why we have been uh, so blessed in this situation because we have not to take, taken it for granted one time. Neither, yeah. neither me nor my partner have taken this shit for granted at all, you know, since we've been here. And it's just, it's it's a blessing, bro. So there are definitely times when I walk in here and I know it's mine, but it don't feel, it's still yeah. like, it's still like, damn, G, like. Damn, a nigga really was like, I want a store. Now we got a store. Like this shit really me. Like this is really, this shit. like you looking around like, yo, you see the see the wall and bro, shit listen, like man, with, with with everything that's been going on, y'all like, you know, with all the plans for redevelopment and shit. I'm going through my phone just looking at old shit, bro, and I got a video on my phone. I got a video of when I first got the keys, when they gave me the keys, and I got a video of when me, my pop, and my homeboy Trey came in here and the walls were white and everything was still intact and it was nothing in here. Yeah. And I'm just walking around like, 
showing I'm showing my man Carrie because my man Carrie drove from Phoenix, Arizona here. He's the owner of Blue Dreams. His store is in uh, MacArthur Mall now, but mm -hmm. he started off here with us. You know what I'm saying? And the video is me showing him around the space like, yeah, bro, I just got the keys. I'm in here. Like, we're going to do this. You're going to be over here. We're going to do this right here. I'm going to paint the walls, da 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 And it's here, you know? So it's it's still super surreal, super humbling. I just look at the signatures on the wall, man. Like it's niggas that ain't even here no more to sign this wall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's just a lot, man. It's a lot. I'm thankful. I can't even I can't even I, I don't even know how to begin to express how thankful I am just to be able to have done this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it have been received at the rate that it's been. Like I don't even know where to start. Yeah. I mean, some stuff you can't put in words. Yeah, you I it's just even hard. if you have the exact words, you just you can't put that shit in words because it's just like it just, it just, I don't even. I see. I look. Yeah, I can't bro. even. I can't even it's explain hard, how you can't put it in words. It's so hard, it's just man. like, yeah. It's just one of them things. Like, it's just an experience. You just yeah. live that experience, and it's just like you can't. Yeah, bro. You can't articulate it. Yeah, you can't. You I don't can't. care how fucking intelligent you are. You yeah. can't articulate that feeling. Yeah, facts though. Yeah, because it's one of them things, man. Like, you know, you you might be doing something, and you and you expect or you hope for the best, but then when you get it, and it's like. 10 times more than what you expected it to be. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. It's one of them things that never gets old. It can never be taken for granted because it's new every day. You know what I'm saying? Every day is a blessing for us here. Yeah. So uh, is um is Made in Norfolk a double entendre? For sure. So is it is it just Made in Norfolk because you was born here, raised here, or is it Made in Norfolk because you making a dollar every day in Norfolk? Making a dollar every day. We making a difference every day. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the thing. It is it's more than just being here. You know, yeah. I am definitely made here. I was born and raised here, you know, but in that I've made my way into making a difference here. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. That's like I say, being made means more than just being made. It's mean it means it's just yeah. solidified in your space where you are and whatever you're doing. So because I am made in Norfolk from the town, I feel like I'm supposed to make a difference here. You know, I'm supposed to if I'm gonna be here, I might as well make a dollar here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it is it's definitely a double on time during that. I try to walk in that shit every day. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, what made you stay? Cause you know most people like ain't working here. We going to Atlanta, mm -hmm. going to LA. We going here, we going there. Like so, what made you say, nah, fuck that? I ain't leaving home. For I'm, real, I'm here. I always feel like you you gonna be who you are wherever you at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want the man when you was here. Yeah. It's not likely that you're going to go to the A and be the man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to discredit nobody that just shot that shot. But yeah. it's just what it is. If you don't have no motion where you at, don't think you're going to go someplace else and miraculously create some type of motion. And them people don't know you from shit. You yeah, won't absolutely. Born, you won't born there or nothing. Yeah. You don't have a leg to stand on going in that situation. So for me, it was like I've always uh, had opportunities to go outside of the area and do certain mm -hmm. things. And I tell artists all the time, that's something that you have to do, you know. <laughs> You don't always have to leave. You have to do things to cement and plant your flag in other places yeah. for sure. But you most definitely have to be uh, a presence where you're from. No, you, for sure. You have to be, bro. Like, you know. Um, Even in the digital age, I still feel like you got to get home first. You do. You do. Especially doing this. You doing do. music, doing shit. Like, you, yeah. you got to get home first. Because that shit is still essential. Yeah, what's your root? What's your what is your root fan base? Like if if I go call a DJ back where you from and ask them are they familiar with you, are they gonna say yeah or nay? And if they say nay, how can you feel like you really gaining traction? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta plant your your flag has to be planted at home first, and then from there you start planting flags elsewhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that was one of the things for me, bro. I and, and I just I feel like so much talent has come from here. Yeah. You know, and and done, so much, yeah, so much talent on so many different levels has, has come from this space and been able to be successful elsewhere. It's no reason for me to not feel like I can be here and create, you know, an infrastructure of my own and see it be successful on yeah. a larger scale. You know, because those same talents that left, when they come back, you are gonna have to acknowledge it to some extent at some point. You know what I mean? And then anybody else that comes into town or that I go see when I go abroad. They gonna see and acknowledge it and be like, oh no, nah, you really doing the shit you say you doing. Yeah. That shit really moving. Like anytime I go out of town and I do anything and I 
and I start to explain to people who I am or what I got going on, and they themselves go invest time to look it up. Yeah. They always hit a nigga back like, bro, nah, this shit really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You, you do, yeah, this shit real. You want to come back next time? What I, what I need to pay you? What yeah. you need? You know what I'm saying? So it ain't one of them things that I, I ever felt like was mandatory for me in regards to leaving and staying away. Yeah. You know, this home, this the turf, bro. I'm going to always be here. I might go someplace else for a minute, get a bag, get some, some notoriety, yeah. whatever. But I'm coming back home, bro, like... Why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? Yeah, no, nah, definitely. So, um, is that why you're so big on philanthropy here? Yeah. Make a difference every day. I see you, you know, working with the kids. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, that shit is so dope to me. So I, <laughs> I, I definitely it, got to ask about that experience. Yeah. Like, pulling up on the kids, having them do the art and shit. Like, yeah. that was... When I seen that, I was like, yo, this, nah, this is solid. Like, this is, this is more shit that we need to mm-hmm. see. Especially in our community. Yeah, facts. Now, I mean, man. we need facts. to see more black men doing that. Facts. Pulling up. It ain't shit to pull up on the kids for a couple hours. Right. Let them do the talk to them. Let them, know what I'm saying? And that's all it is, bro. You know, even with that. So I was uh, doing an enrichment, a summer enrichment program mm-hmm. with Norfolk Public Schools with uh, the kids at PB Young Elementary, teaching them how to make shirts. And at the base, most basic rate way possible to make shirts, though. You know what I mean? Nothing yeah. too complex because they, they, they were... First and second graders. Yeah, so, you didn't want them to think he was in, running the sweatshop. At yeah, this we shit. not. Like, we not. You don't want no misunderstandings yeah, or no shit. You, know what like. you know what I'm saying? I my thing was just teach, trying to show yeah, the yeah. kids that you could take a thought. You know what I mean? And make it a tangible item. You know, yeah. what I mean? that was my biggest thing. Whatever you thinking in your head, draw it, write it, put it on a piece of paper, and we are gonna put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Just so you can see that things that you think can truly become real things yeah. that can ha- that can happen. You know what I'm saying? So. That was the biggest thing for me, and it was just it was an opportunity, and I and I'm thankful for the opportunity. But my reason behind that is just I, I'm a kid from the city, man. I'm a town baby, man. I yeah. say that shit all the time, man. Like I'm a I'm a product of Norfolk Public Schools. I'm a product of NYSP. If you from that era, you know what I mean. If you want remember Norfolk State youth sports program yeah. and shit like that, you know what I mean. I I remember when the city had those certain resources back in the early mid late nineties and shit. Yeah. Well, mid to late because I ain't that old, but like, like mid yeah, yeah, yeah. mid to late nineties. I remember when we had those certain resources that were available. Things have since changed. You know, we're doing things like. That's why I'm so active and I try to be so involved with the people that's doing stuff so I can still give input like, yo, Absolutely. I got a, a councilwoman home girl, my, my, my sister Donika Royce, the, the city councilwoman. She and I talk all the time because she's young and she remembers certain infrastructures like I remember from the town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's anytime that you can do something to try to give back and recreate things that we had when we were there, I'm all for it. You know, like I said, a lot of programs that were once there aren't the same. So anytime yeah. I can try to do anything to just give my time, you know, because time is one of those things that you don't understand the value of it until you actually give it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Making the shirts with the kids was cool. Letting them see what I do. Getting to talk to them was cool. But the time that I invested with the little homies was was more important than all of it. You know what I mean? They took their shirts home. But outside of that, it was, Mr. Driver, I remember when you said we should do X, Y, Z. And, and I'm going to do that next time. Like, you know, that's, that's, that was the game for me, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... That that's really why you know all this stuff is cool. Getting paid to sell the clothes and do the shows, all that yeah. shit cool. But shit like that, that shit is. Oh, yeah, so, that's the thing. Like, yeah. what what good is all of this shit if you ain't doing nothing? Like, if you if yeah. you if you can only enjoy the fruits of this shit alone. Right, right, for sure. Like, if you only enjoy yeah. it alone, you ain't getting nothing. Cause all I'm an only know, child, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That shit. So I need somebody to be like, yo, nah, I'm gonna give you the love, bro. Just give it back, cause it's, that's <laughs> we keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. Just keep the love cycling, so for yeah, sure. Yeah, and that's man. the thing. And the the craziest thing about it, and hopefully this shit comes into fruition. Like at some point, like one of them t-shirts that one of them kids made, like you might make the next whoever. Hey, listen. I ain't even gonna start throwing out brand names. Come on, man. You might make the next made in Norfolk. Facts, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts, like you bro. might make Facts, the though, next bro. Facts, though, whatever, bro. whatever big brand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was the thing, man, you know, just opening their minds up. To the possibility of that is something that I could never, yeah. I could never buy, I could never pay for. You know what I mean? I could never be paid. You know what I mean? It, to it's intangible. Never, yeah, it's like intangible. It's a, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's nothing, intangible. It's for nothing sure. that nigga can be given to compensate me for that. You know what I'm saying? Because like, just like I said, just the conversations that I'm having with the kids. They're like, so you from Norfolk? You from Norfolk, Mr. Driver? Yeah. For real? <laughs> you and you make clothes? For real? <laughs> Where you make them at? In Norfolk, for real? Like, I just they like, made yeah, in Norfolk, man. Yeah. Like, it's made in Norfolk. I make all the clothes. How I'm showing y'all how I do it. 
is how, how how I'm showing you guys how to do it. It's the same concept that I use when I'm in my store. You yeah. Know? You can take an idea and make a living off of it. You know, this is just me showing y'all that it's possible, you know. So, like you said, it's intangible, bro. Yeah. That's, um, man. So, because I didn't, that's wild. I, I, I never knew that about you. I met you, I think, like, oh, seven, oh, eight. Mm-hmm. I think I met you through uh, rail. <laughs> at Radio Ready. I said Radio Ready. At Radio Ready. Like, radio that's how ready. crazy, yeah, like, that's how sir. far back shit was. I, we was the same size, nigga. <laughs> like, I said that shit to you earlier. Like, <laughs> like fool, but yeah, like, I think that was that time. Like, I think we had the session. Shout out to Lowe's. Mm-hmm. That's, I still think that nigga's Batman to this day. I, I can't prove it yet. You a fool, man. I can't prove it yet. But, that, but Have you seen Lowe's? Who you nah, that's why man? I think he Batman, bro. <laughs> I think Shout Lowe's is Lowe's. Batman. Shout like to Lowe's, always man. been a genuine nigga, but yeah. For sure. So even like back then, but you always been the same person. Even you evolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You evolved, you 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 obviously grew as yeah, a man. But, but at the core though, it's but the same. Yeah, yeah, you same always been like the same, like the same co- the positive qualities yeah. has always been the same. It yeah, ain't man. never been like, oh, this nigga, man. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's never been that energy <laughs> yeah. when a nigga walk around, man. And that's something I always pride myself on. You know, it's just it's character. You know, we nobody is perfect. We all are flawed, but I always try to uh present myself. In a way that is respectable, you know. I always feel like yeah. if you give niggas respect, a nigga gonna give it back to you. And if they don't, then we got an issue. And then, and I don't yeah. want no issue, so you go ahead with that shit, bro. Definitely I'll deal with it later. And that's what I tell people, like, because I used to hear all the time, like, you gotta earn respect. But then I'm like, nah. To with me, I give respect at the forefront. Right, like, right. I'm opening the door. I feel with like that. you earn disrespect. That's a fact, y'all. That is like very true. that's what you earn. That's what you earn. Cause I lead with respect. Right. Cause I expect. Anybody I encountered to leave with respect, because exactly. why? Because I don't understand. Yeah, like yeah, why would you not? I don't know you from shit. What we got a problem for? Yeah, it's, it's no reason right. to just not want to respect a nigga right. off the off the initial right. contact. So outside of that, it's like disrespect is earned. Yes, for sure. And it's earned, earned especially now, like niggas older. You know, yeah, it's a little more patience in yes, life. Like exactly, bro. So, so if you get me there, yeah, man, dog. we there. Like man. now we there, and this whatever, whichever way you wanted this shit to go, I don't know what you had planned. Right. But it ain't about to go the way you thought it was. Now, now I'm pissed. Come yeah. On, so, man. like you said, you were at a stage of life where it's a lot more patience yeah. involved. Cause you try not to do that. Yeah. Fact. You try not to do yeah. that. Like, like Ho said, try to try to ignore. Him, mm-hmm. Talk to the Lord. Pray for him. Yeah. But some fools just it's love to perform. perform. It's just like you know, you you want to mm-hmm. kind of let shit slide. Yeah. So you know, the patience, you know, the growth. Growth is a, is is a beautiful thing. It is indeed, indeed. A lot of people don't want to embrace growth, but like. I mean, it's that's, necessary. That's, I think I it's the most the most necessary thing because life is stages. Yes. Like this shit ain't just, and this is it's not as long as we we like to make it seem. Bro, listen, man. You know, time is not the thing that is on anybody's side, and yeah, you don't know how much of it you have. You know, so it's like you said, it's one of those things that you just you just cannot take for granted because we don't know. Yeah. We do not know, bro. You know. Nobody know the day, the time. Like, you could not wake up tomorrow morning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you could wake up and fucking a freak accident can happen. Walking out your front door. Fucking plane could fall out the sky and land on your car. Like now anything can like anything can happen at any time. Like you just never know what's going on. Like that's why you definitely gotta like cherish this shit. You can't take it for granted. Like you really gotta Yeah. Just love life. And live life. So one more thing, man. Um when did you start public speaking? <laughs> 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 So that was one of those things that kind of like was just natural progression, you know, yeah. me, me being in the store, man, and just always talking to that damn phone, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's I know that that's what it came from, yeah. bro. Like just promoting myself and further branding and, 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 and advertising what we got going on here. People just would be like, yo, man, I, I want to hear your story, man. Come tell us about what you got going on. Yeah. And I would go to schools, bro, no bull or places, whatever, and speak. And just talk, and people will be taken aback by how articulate I am. They'd be like, "Yo, yeah. damn, you really are an, are an intelligent guy. You speak very well." I'm like, "Yeah, I know what you' about to ask me. <laughs> yeah, I'll come to your event, man. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's cool though, bro. It's it's cool because for me, all right. So it's wild, right, job? Because 
I'll be seeing niggas on like YouTube. Do you you know how you get this car? I'll be like, yo, man, you selling bullshit. Oh you yeah. Sh- yeah, you selling work tickets. At the end of them shit, they never actually tell you how to do it. Right, they never tell you how to you do it. You just gotta sign up for their four week class. Come on, man. And I was like, <laughs> I, n- I don't wanna come off as one of them type niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I go do shit and people ask me to come speak at this shit, I never wanna come off as one of them type niggas. So uh I just go to a lot of events and I'm just myself, man. We just have real open and candid conversation. And it's more me taking questions and answering questions than me speaking and telling people shit. Yeah. You know, if you ask me something and I can speak to it, I'll tell you. But if I don't know, I'm a black bro. I don't know. I'm still a small business. You know, I'm just yeah. blessed to have been able to be successful in what I'm doing by the things that I'm doing. I can yeah. tell you the things that I'm doing and how they working for me. I don't have nothing to hide from you. Yeah. You know, and you can try to implement them in your way. But if I don't know, I don't know, G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't come to me later like, yo, you told me. Right. I, no, didn't yeah, right. I didn't that. tell you that. I told you that's what happened with me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's my thing, man. And people just genuinely have taken to it. You know what I'm saying? From there, they just, hey, man, can you come speak here? Hey, can you come speak here? Can you, can you do this? You know, we got this group of kids. You know what I mean? Da, 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 da. So it's dope. It's it, That in itself is a blessing also because that's just an extension for me, of people taking what I do serious, you know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, not even gonna lie, bro, one of the things that I was like, I cannot do in life is be 40 years old telling my son I'm a rapper and nobody take that shit serious but me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this, yo, and to be, to be honest, not to cut you off, even though I cut you off, but not yeah. to cut you off, like, because you know, because we, like, you know, I, I kind of transitioned, I still yeah. a little bit, but we came up, like, in the circus, the, the top hands yeah, and the bro. fucking 45. Yes, like, we came up in them circus and shit, but, and it was, like, even young, like, right. it don't matter how nice you was, it was always somebody like, oh, you rap too. Come on, man. Like, you know, oh, you rap too? You rap too? Like, like right, right. It was a time, like, it was just, like, so, you know, to be... 40 and still a rapper, like, you really got to... Yeah, it's got to be something that you are... Yeah, like, you it, can't be a... You got to really be doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't go from, oh, you rap too, oh, to, you, oh, you still trying to rap? Right, right, so, oh, you still trying to rap, bro? It's one of the... Yo, I always say rap is one of the hardest professions in the world, and it ain't skill set hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard with everything that surrounds the shit. Yeah. Because... Rap naysayers ain't just regular naysayers. No. <laughs> like, no, it ain't just regular naysayers. No, Niggas will call you trash and never heard a song. Never listen to your shit. Yeah, never a heard a song. Nigga will see nothing. you, bro, and be like, nah, that nigga ain't that got nigga it. Trash. Like, Damn, bro, you ain't listen to shit I say. I can really yeah. rap. Like, I got it, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, bro, I don't fuck with the way your hat sit on your head. <laughs> <laughs> What you mean? We we rapping. We ain't talking like, about oh, he rap. wear a bucket hat. He about to rap about pyramids Come and on, shit. Man. Like he about to rap about pyramids. But yeah, that's the Which, shit, man. That was that was one of my biggest things. Yeah. Like you know, as I started to get older, and I was still I still had the bug, and I was still actively and adamantly and passionately pursuing music and shit. I was like, you know what? I got to figure something out because I can't. When, once I had my son, I turned. I had my son when I turned. I'm 34 now. I had my son at 29. Yeah. When I had my son, I was like, all right, you know, I'm still out here rapping. I'm still doing the things that I'm trying to do. I'm still pursuing this career. People yeah. take me serious, but I got to do something because I can't be telling him, yeah, I'm a rapper. And you looking at me like, no, you not. <laughs> like, daddy, why only me and you know your songs? Like, why like yeah. Me, why only me and you know the songs? Why when we out, don't nobody, you, when do you rap? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I couldn't I couldn't yeah, I, yeah. I just couldn't feel that way myself because I I was like yo I gotta do this this is something I want for myself but now that I have this person that I know is gonna be looking to me looking to me I gotta make sure if they look to me I'm what I say I am to the world to them yeah, so sure. you know that that was that was really one of the biggest things man yeah absolutely like that shit is and then music is just like man music is a language in its own it is like you go to Japan. And them motherfuckers don't know what the words mean, bro. but they know every song word for word. Listen. Sweden, Switzerland, nobody look crazy. like you. They can't tell you how much they love you after the show because y'all, it's a crazy language barrier there. Y'all listen. But I, they know every fucking word. Bro, I did. When I was on the uh, the tour with my nigga Rail and shit, we went mm-hmm. to the Dominican Republic, bro. I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. They don't speak English. I thought you was Dominican, bro. You nah, look like nah, one of nah, You nah, look nah, like nah, a Dominican. Nah, nope, I'll take it. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'm black all the way. <laughs> El Negro. Yeah, now nah, you know what? I know you're not Dominican because they they never claiming black. Oh, nah, yes. no, I'm Dominican. No, 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 I'm yeah, not fact. fucking black. Yeah, man. Nah, they right. darker than you. I'm not fucking black. Mm-hmm. I'm Dominican. Like yes. it's. But yeah, went to the DR, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm performing. They they you know he had a tour. We went to the DR <laughs> and I go on stage and I taught myself how to say my name is Lil Four Wheel, 
I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, and I came to party. And I just Drop. Put, put that yeah. shit together in my head in, like, a, the day, you know what I mean, and kept saying it to myself so I could get it. I get this shit down. The DJ was uh, bilingual, so he spoke English and shit, so he was with me, you know what I mean? Yeah, Man, yeah, we got yeah. that shit rocking, bro. Get off stage, the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All love. Now you can't go to the bar in the DR to get a drink because niggas is right Come here on, talking in Spanish and bro. you can't eat. Bro, oh, oh, oh. Friend, friend, picture. Oh, yeah. Picture. I'm like, Come Dimelo, on. Dimelo. Come on, bro. Come on. Yeah. I'm here. What we doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit was cool, though, man. And like you said, it's just, it's, it is, it, music is a language in itself. It's yeah. a language in itself. That shit is definitely a, it's, it's one of them things like music is never going anywhere. Like, it's, because music can help you articulate some shit that you probably never could have in words. Mm -hmm. Like, you ever felt some shit and you didn't know how to say it, but you heard a song that came on and was like, yo, this motherfucker. This nigga has encompassed <laughs> every feeling that I have. Yeah, like, how the fuck did this nigga know how to put this shit in oh, words? Man. Because I can't even put this shit in words to myself and right. my thoughts. Right. And this nigga got there made art out of it. Right. Or this this woman made art right. like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, this shit is crazy. So, yeah, that shit is, man... Music is a beautiful thing, man. Is, man. But yeah, man, it's it's about that time. So, a driver, anything you wanna, anything you wanna plug, anything uh, you got coming up? Well, you know, Big Four Wheel Project is out now, streaming on all platforms. Jeep single and video out right now. That's the one off. You know, that was the summer record that we went with. It might be on the deluxe version of the Big Four Wheel Project because I got a couple of uh, records. You know, what I'm saying that I might put out before uh, the season over. Um, you know, we got 119 days left in this facility that we are in now, so we are in the process of getting ready to move to a new space. Uh, I'll start promoting that, you know what I mean, once it's finalized yeah. and I sign that paper like I'm supposed to. Um, just always constant progression, always constant work, man, you know. Like I said, I got 118 days left in here, so I'm about to go crazy. I'm about to put out a couple videos from the tape, probably do an event or two here. Um... Just, just try to keep this energy alive while we got it, you know. We definitely going to transition it to another space, like I said, but nothing beats ground zero, bro, you know yeah. what I mean? Nothing will ever replace or take the place of this this facility, so I'm going to try to make the most of it while we still got it. Um, and that's it, man, you know, just constant constant progression. My goal is to always move up and bring the gang with me, so that's what we're going to do. Bet. Yeah, I mean, you, you ever need any extras, man. I, I come be in the background. That'll work, bro. Listen, like, don't worry. Militant video, we're going to shoot that shit <laughs> right out here. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm telling a thousand people, if you want to pull up, yeah. pull up. That's what we doing. Like, so that mean if you want to be in front, pull up early. Yeah, pull up early, you know. The Jeep, my Jeep homies might pull up. I got some some bike gang niggas that might pull up. Yeah. Like, this shit is going to get, gonna get oh, so I can pull. I can, I can bring the Hemi. I can bring the Cherokee For out. For sure. I can bring the Cherokee out. For sure. I bet. For sure. Because I didn't For know sure. if it was a Wrangler only party. No, I don't know. I don't know if it's no. <laughs> I don't know if it's Wranglers only, man. I was like, bring man, I got to. Bring the Jeep. Your shit fast. <laughs> Hell yeah. That bitch guzzle gas. That goddamn yeah. Hemi. That V8. That shit. That shit suck. I'm no, let me not say that for that bitch. Don't get me home tonight. Yeah, right, yeah. Don't do that for <laughs> sure, for sure. The, the gas on it, suck. putting gas in it, suck. Yeah, because you said it's a V8. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is terrible. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, eighty-seven. Liter? Nah, gas. You say eighty-seven? Yeah, I take eighty-seven. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's eighty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighty-seven. I was about to say no, it's five point seven, but yeah, that eighty-seven. Yeah, okay, that shit take eighty-seven. Right. I was about to say, whoo, eighty-nine, ninety-three. Oh my god. Nah, eighty-nine, ninety-three. I'm at the auction. <laughs> I'm going straight down. I'm going straight down military. Yeah. Say, get this shit yeah. off, yo. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm going straight down military. Uh -huh. Getting the auction. Twenty-two hundred or something. Get me yeah. a little Civic. Like no I'm, bullshit. yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah. Get me a little Civic or something. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, I definitely pull up, especially if any, any anybody from the uh, Jeep video gonna be there. Cause I'm yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Had them in the front, for sure, for sure. Had them in the front. They look, they all look like they smelled amazing. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a nice <laughs> night, man. I appreciate the ladies for coming out. Yeah, shout nah, out uh, spot. Shout out to my girl, Damn Danny. Damn Danny was the lead. She was a shorty in my Jeep with me. Damn Danny is a part of Winter Circle Records. That's a uh, label me and my man Big Steve are working on right now. You know, she is the female artist. Like I said, Jeep is a single we just put out. But Damn Danny is the female artist that we working with, and she just had her song. It's called Booty Walk. It just okay. it just came out uh, two days ago. You know, I promoted it here and there, but once the video was shot, once we start shooting the video, you see me go crazy with it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, definitely. I gotta get Steve up here too. Yeah, man. We ain't really, you know, mm -hmm. 
it's good. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, when niggas say that, it'd be because it'd be, but nah, we just never really. Yeah, it was in the same space. Like, we, we just touched elbows a bunch of times. Yeah, and then, all. you know, he fucked with Lowe's. Mm -hmm. So I fucked with Lowe's. So yep. a lot of our sessions mixed in. But, yeah, you know, I about to say that's all. You just yeah. went in the same space at the same time to have that conversation. Yeah. But, Outside you know, of business matters and right. shit. So, you know. But I can definitely um, build that bridge. That ain't nothing. Steve is a conversation, man. Like, you know, his story yeah, is no, every just time, as extensive. You know every time I ever spoke with him, like, it's. Always been loved. Like, always, I'm like, dog, how the always. fuck are you this wise, my nigga? We damn near the same. <laughs> always, bro. And I be saying the same like, shit. When did like, you have time to learn this shit? Yeah. Yeah. But my man be on it, man. So, yeah, man. Definitely, man. A driver. Yes, sir. Little four wheel yes, or big four wheel big now. Four -wheel. Big, yeah, four -wheel. big four wheel. Shout out to my little four wheels. You know what I'm saying? Um, make sure you go get the big four wheel project. Yep. It's out right now. Mm -hmm. That's how you know I'm old. I said go get. Niggas don't even go get out. Well, it's streaming. Same, I be saying the same <laughs> shit. Go get that new shit. And they be like, bro, nah, nah, nah. You just download, nigga. Yeah. Download that new like, shit. Nigga, I just hit the button. Like this, is, we don't gotta go get it no more. Yeah, that shit right. is in the palm of my hand. But yeah, make sure y'all go stream that motherfucking um big four wheel project. Mm -hmm. Go stream Jeep. Come come to goddamn Made in Norfolk. Yep. Come cop you something. Yeah, 700 North fire. Military. 700 North Military Highway, Space 2006. You know we here till we not. And I promise we going to be here. Yeah, yeah, the old, I'm about to say some old shit. Funko Land, the old Funko Land. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> it is that. The old Funko Land. That's what I remember this being. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember this was Funko Land that's back in the know, day. That's how you know you really from out here. Piccadilly right there. Right like, right you know there. what I'm saying? That's how you know you really from the town. <laughs> I tell people all the time, that's, that's, when people, when we first got here and people were asking where we were located, I would say right beside Piccadilly yeah. or Funko or, you remember where GameStop was at? And they would be like, yeah, bro, yeah. there you go. That's me. You already I'm know. I'm on my way. I'm saying regular jobs guest list, a driver. Yes, sir. Peace and love.